Hey everyone, I'm Nito King, and welcome back to Let's Play Under Hero. Today we're heading off into the Moth Forest to find the Moth Queen. That is admittedly a clever way to disguise something. Why is this guy going backwards? All right, we indeed have an evil store where we can refill our potions. We can increase the number of potions we can carry, just buy HP upgrades, and magic anvils, which aren't of much use just yet, but we'll have a shield soon. Our leader is a little eccentric, says the bat named Leo X Blader. Well, this is clearly the portal to the Moth Woods. And we're not going to be able to reach any of the other portals, so let's just head on down. Of course, we always have to start by going left. Yeah, I agree. Let's hit the town. Yeah, we actually don't get to go to the town. Yeah, she's got some painful memories of this place. Thank you. 
Yeah, those pillars are checkpoints that actually look a little bit like Elizabeth IV. But I'm sure that's a coincidence. Here we are in Moth Forest proper. And here comes the battle tutorial. So there's a lot of Mario and Luigi style combat here where you watch the enemy's tells to figure out what type of attack they're going to do, dodge them with correct timing, and that'll refill your stamina so you can attack them more. And the better your timing is, I think the more stamina it recharges, but it might also increase the power of your counterattack. Notice sometimes they get critical hits that do a lot more damage. And defeating enemies gives you experience, money, and a small HP refill, which I can't use right now. Yeah, I can drop down, but there's nothing down there, so let's just go up and grab these coins. And a chest! Don't think there are any secrets over that way, but you always have to look. We can walk, but there's not usually going to be a lot of reason to do that. 
Hey, here's a puzzle. So we'll have to find a key and come back to the locked door. It's pretty familiar. Yeah, someday I do want to do a playthrough where I bribe as many opponents as possible. But it's kind of tough, because then you get less money, you get less experience. I'm probably going to defeat everything that I possibly can in this playthrough, just to make sure that I've got enough to afford all the upgrades, and boost all my stats to the maximum. Yep, some enemies even drop potions, which is really nice. Not that I'm using a whole lot of them yet, but I will be in a while, and also I tend to accidentally use them when I'm trying to say duck and hit the wrong direction. Oh wait, Elizabeth had something to say back there. Yeah, she says after limiting our combat options until she's tutorialized everything. I'll come back to that later. There are a lot of ways to go from here. I'm going to take the high road first.
Yeah, I've never really found Elizabeth's motions in the battle menu to be all that useful, but... It's hard to tell what beats of the music you're actually supposed to swing on. So, I try not to worry about it. I also like the way the battle music adds the bongo beats, pretty much the same way that Super Mario World does whenever Yoshi is on screen. Otherwise, it's exactly the same song. That yeah, was close. I let my stamina get way low, but it worked out. So I think I'm gonna head up and back, make sure that I cover all of my options. I was trying to get a good angle on the coins there and forgot that the background walls you actually can walk through and fall off. I'm used to stuff like the steps in the castle where you can't walk past them. Hey, another battle! This is an optional one. I think technically most of the fights are optional. I could just avoid touching the enemies and get past them, but again, you don't get experience or money that way. So what I usually do is try to dodge and then use the stamina boost that I get from that to attack quickly. I'm probably attacking more aggressively than I really should, but it works out. I'm going to stand over to the left so that as few coins as possible fall off. And we're back at the beginning, so no secret's going to be off to the left. Let's see what I missed down here in this pool. There's a coin that fell from the chest above. You know, normally, you wouldn't want to go out of your way to collect too much money in a game like this. You don't have to worry about every individual coin, but in this one, money is actually limited. There are so many coins sitting around, and you can't repeat battles. So, you know, if you're giving up all your money in bribes, or having to refill your potions constantly, you are going to run out. And we got a magic anvil for free, which is nice, because I don't ever plan on buying them. They're alright, but with enough skill, you'll never actually need to use them. Even though we haven't learned how just yet. So I'm going to go through the water, and try and catch up with that path that I left on the right side. Rather conveniently, if we pick up a potion when we have maximum capacity, it just immediately gets converted to money. Which is really nice. Again, money is in limited supply here. Yeah, I know, I found that one. but I don't think anybody's got more than one thing to say is battle dialogue. There, I got really careless. Yeah, if the enemies attack you too much, they'll get tired. So you get a free opportunity to hit them. That was a misread of that tell. But fortunately, I get back all the hit points that I lost from the recovery orb.
And here, I believe, is where we meet up with the other path. There's the chest that I opened right up there. So, it should be one more fight and we'll be out of this area. I'll try to do a bit better this time. That is not better. Yeah, you're not usually completely helpless if you run out of stamina, but we haven't unlocked the mechanic that would save you just yet. Hey, it's the big tree! Yeah, I don't expect that I'm going to need to use the journal very much. I figure what I'll do is at the end of each video, I'll go into the items menu and take a look at it so you can see what's written. Anyway, the map is pretty convenient. We can see there's a water-filled cave up ahead, presumably where we need to go, and an unscalable cliff over on this side. This is pretty much the only part of the forest we can get to that we haven't explored yet, so naturally this is where we're going to go. Let me thank you with a sword to the face. Yeah, sometimes just letting go of down seems to press up automatically. I don't much like the Xbox 360 controller, but it's the only controller that this game is set up to work with. I tried it with the PS4 controller and it mostly works, but none of the buttons line up properly. Yeah, I got my first cassette tape! And my first level up! This is a wonderful battle! So upgrades are kinda Paper Mario style. I can upgrade attack points, hit points, or extra slots on my stamina meter. The first couple levels I'm always going to pick Stamina. I want to get to 9 as quickly as possible for reasons that we'll see later. Admittedly, early in the game extra Stamina is not all that useful, it just means a few more attacks you can do early in the game, and then later on you'll have better ways to fill it up. And there's our silver key, so we can finally unlock that gate way back at the beginning of the forest. Unfortunately, that means a whole lot of backtracking, but I'm not going to make you sit through that. Before I go, though, let me just go ahead and pull this up so you can see the descriptions of the new items that we've got. We'll play the cassette when we get to a save station. So I'll see you back at the Silver Gate. Yeah, 
And now we can get into the underground section of the forest. Fortunately, there's not a whole lot here, but there are a lot of very deep pools that have some stuff in them. So we've got to explore them all. Yeah, no, you find a lot of cassette tapes just sitting around in chests, as well as getting them from combat. I don't know whether the ones that you get from combat are from specific enemies, or for hitting certain targets. They might be tied to the enemies that are worth Steam achievements. Not gonna worry about it too much. I've already gotten most of the achievements for the game. Yeah, unfortunately we can't talk to this snake fellow. Yeah, I'm gonna try to do the parries here. That was way early. But the shield is, of course, the life-saving mechanism if you completely run out of stamina. You can still block those last-second attacks. Generally, I don't use it unless I actually tire myself out from carelessness or if I'm fighting an enemy that has projectiles, and the best way to fight it is to send them back. Otherwise, I'm probably just going to rely on dodging most of the time, because it's much simpler. Unfortunately, it looks like not every enemy gives you health orbs. But I'm not too worried about it. Enemies don't do a lot of damage this early in the game. And there's a chest that's tough to get to. But we've got a key for one of the apartments back in the castle. I could head back and open it now and get whatever reward is inside, but for right now I'm not going to worry about it. I'll take care of that once I'm done my business in the Moth Forest and I'm ready to go back to the castle normally. And this is a long tunnel. I have a feeling that this is actually progress, especially with that enemy there. Yeah, I don't think ducking or attacking is really any slower underwater. I think it's just jumping. And even then, the timing on jumps is about the same. It's just coming down from the jump takes a lot longer. So it's not good if you accidentally jump when your enemy is tired and you need to get those hits. Huh. And the potion actually just healed me immediately, rather than converting into money. 
not too awful. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to be able to go back and get what I missed at this point. I'll pick that up on my way out of the forest at the end. It'll be something to do, since none of these enemies respawn. Hey, it's one of those different colored ones that introduced himself as a mini-boss. So that was actually a hint about the timing of the dodges here. This snake only does the tell once, so you've got to be prepared. Fortunately that does make the battle go just a bit faster. And another cassette tape, possibly for defeating my first mini-boss. And that, I believe, would be the special key. And this should conveniently bring us right back to the tree. In case it wasn't obvious, this is the top of that unscalable cliff that we found before. So we can just go and open the tree, and yeah, I know this episode's running a bit long, but there should be a save station right inside, so that's how far I'm gonna get. According to the map, the save station is just up and to the left. And that'll be where we'll end this video. Alright, that was creepy. I'm getting far away from you. get emergency supplies here. I think they're more expensive here than at the evil shop. Just potion refills and magic anvils. We don't need any of that stuff right now. And there's the boombox where we can play our collection of cassettes. I believe it comes pre-stocked with the save station background theme. But then we can play any of the songs we've got. Yeah, this is Mr. Stitch's theme. This is one of my favorites. 
And then I've got a bunch of songs that I think are unlocked when you beat the game. I'm not going to listen to those yet. We'll hear them at the end. And whatever song you pick will play at all the save points throughout the game. There's also the free coffee and the save point itself. So that's this save done, and I'll just check the journal and see what objectives we've met and what we have left to do on the way out, and I'll see you guys in the next video.